There you go. <laughs> we are live, Charles. Yes, what? we are live. What did I, what did I, mean I bring my phone with my, Oh my God. Hang on, bro. Hang on. Hang on. Lucy, hang on. That, that, that. How are you doing, everybody? And welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another night of disorientation. <laughs> if I look tired, I am tired. <laughs> but we like to say aloha no to everybody. All How right. you doing, brother? Got him. Got him. See my shirt? Boom. Kawaii strong, baby. Yeah, yeah. So what's happening, man? Yeah, it's just been uh it's just been a long, long day. It's been hot too, man. I, it's just oh, this yeah. heat is uh, almost unbearable. Almost unbearable. So let's see. All right, all right, guys. Aloha and welcome. It's uh hump day Wednesday. Hope you guys had a great Memorial Day weekend. Um, but it looks, uh, uh, the reports we saw, media reports and stories we're hearing, uh, it was a lot of congregating on Memorial Day weekend, man. It was a lot of, you know, I know a lot of people have been cooped up for so long. <laughs> and uh, somebody asking if we'd win the volleyball game. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we did. We spanked them. I mean, yeah. spank them. I don't even remember the score. <clears throat> they called it. They called the game. They called the game. I mean, we were up so much. It was, they didn't think it was possible for UH to catch up. So they called it. And it was a good thing because we didn't want to embarrass them too much. But uh, but it was the upset of the year. No, it the definitely. NC? Yeah, I surprised uh, ESPN never pick up on that because, you know, two old yeah. guys – Taking on this young guy, 6'10", 6'8", and some giants. But, uh, yeah, we smoked them. We smoked them. But, but you know, in, in all honesty. <laughs> yeah, we had a – it was a great event, I got to say, Charlie. It was a great event. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it was good fun. It was, it was nice. Uh, much mahalos to Grove Farm and all the sponsors for putting that on. So our local, you know, I didn't realize we got a lot of diehard, uh, diehard UH. UH fans, UH volleyball fans. Uh, in fact, I met a guy who yep. played for UH in the 70s, the volleyball team. His was wife, <clears throat> his wife played for the UH Wahine volleyball team in the 70s. That's how they met. And they ended up getting married. And um, he lives yeah. here on Kauai. Yeah, yeah, lives here on Kauai. I can't remember his name, but it was pretty cool. A lot of, lot of, lot of uh, kupuna. A lot of kupuna. In fact, my auntie Dane. Remember, we were talking about my auntie Dane when the coach was on. She went. She came with us, and she was so excited. Um, coach Wade gave her a challenge coin from UH. She's like pickled. So stoked. So it was awesome. It was awesome. But yeah, it was a great event. Um, of course, right, you know, in conjunction with the uh the, yeah. the farmers market. So it was it was just awesome. Awesome. Is there a video of you guys playing? It, it was well, so bad that they asked me to not share the video. Yeah. It and plus so it was bad. copy, it was already because of UH athletics is copyrighted, so we couldn't. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to pay one point two million dollars to Something use the like video. Something like this, some astronomical number, <laughs> yeah. and I just say, well. But you know, if you if you do wanna, if you do wanna see uh, the repeat, um, we'll we'll try to figure out a way. But in all honesty, folks, I didn't show up, <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't play anybody. <laughs> I don't want you folks going around and go, Uncle Charlie, I'll come now and beat the UH. I don't want you doing that. Yeah, it was. Uh... <laughs> but, but, you know, it, 
it felt good while it lasted, while we kept this thing going, but no, we, we, did, we ended up, we didn't play. You know, I, I think if Charlie had showed up and we took them on, we would be broadcasting live from uh, Wilcox Memorial Hospital. Yeah. 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 It was It'd so be one hot, of those. Man. It was so hot. But, uh, it was fun. It was fun. But all over, all over is, 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 is really the, you know, they attribute it to climate change. I mean, whatever it is, I know that Mother Nature is acting kind of funny and um, we already got a second storm system in the region, as they say. So they're keeping an eye on that. It's just, it's just a lot of the surface, surface temperatures on our ocean is really, really warm and it's prime. It's prime and I, I just pray out, please don't, you know. You know, you know what's interesting and I, I'm not going to get into the debate about climate change, but <clears throat> when you watch, uh, when you watch the news reports and they say, oh, today a new record was set. Yeah, we had one degree warmer than it was back in 1969. Okay, so what was that in 1969? Was that global warming too? Was that climate change back in 1960? We went one degree hotter and it's like the big, the big production. Oh my God. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. It's, you know, this, our, our, our world goes, this whole earth goes through cycles and, uh, you know, you get hot seasons, you get cold seasons. Like I said, I, I don't want scientists, so I'm not going to. I'm not going to debate any scientists. I'm just saying, you know, it's hot. It's hot. And, uh, and it's going to get hotter. And uh, <clears throat> El Nino. Yeah, no El Nino this year. Thank goodness. But, uh, we, we, you know, there's already a storm system forming off the, the West Coast uh, heading our way. I, I, well, I haven't looked at it today. But, but you know, it, it, is, it is hot because I was watching the news earlier and the news uh, one of the divers took an underwater picture of the, the reefs and actually they actually showed reef fish swimming around with no wetsuits on. That is warm. That is warm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, the, yeah. those people that sell the wetsuits for the fish, they're taking a yeah. beating this year. Yep, exactly. They're taking a licking because they're not buying them. It's so hot. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's insane. Anyway, guys, as you can see, it's me and Charlie tonight. We're going to just have fun. We're going to talk story. We're going to share uh, the, the week. Again, you know, we uh, apologize for not coming on on Monday, but we felt that it was Memorial Day, guys. Memorial Day is really the time where we honor those that gave the ultimate sacrifice uh, for our country. The reason why we have the freedoms to come up here and say what we want. Hashtag Aloha. So we wanted yep. to honor them by just staying off the air and, and uh, just focusing on, on what's important. But, you know, a lot has changed, as you know, as I said earlier, when we first came on this Memorial Day, it almost appeared as if we had no pandemic. We had no pandemic. Uh, when you look at the news coverage, Honolulu, uh, the beaches, the, the parties, the, the get togethers, uh, and it happened here on Koi as well, I'm sure every island. and. Um, and, and, I, and I get it, everybody wants to just really relax and unwind, but you gotta remember something, people. 50% of our population is not vaccinated, half. And that means half of our population is vulnerable to this disease, this, disease, this virus and the, and the variants. And uh, we gotta be careful. We still gotta be careful. We still gotta be vigilant. We still gotta be safe. Understand the the, mask mandate you don't need to wear a mask yet you know there are some experts and by the way charlie uh our far viewers dr jerome kim will be on our show next week tuesday special night special time because we gotta obviously accommodate his schedule he um this guy is world renowned he speaks on all the major uh news channels he also participates in numerous uh, uh, conferences and seminars. He's doing one for uh, for the UK or the, I forget the British Parliament or whatever. This guy is top of the line. He's an expert, and um, 
we are so honored and blessed to have him on our show next week, Tuesday. I'm, I'm so looking forward to that. So uh, I'm excited. But my point is this, guys, is <clears throat> I really don't care what our leaders say. I don't care about the leaders that tell you we're, we're doing well. We are. I mean, comparatively speaking, we are doing much better mm -hmm. than many states. But, but this thing can turn at any moment. So we just got to be careful, guys. We can ex ex enjoy the, the relaxed restrictions, but we got to gotta be smart. We just got to be smart. Mm -hmm. Gotta be smart. Well, now, I did want to. Go ahead. I did want to say, that, uh, you know, regardless of what's happening right now, you folks, you you know, it's like asking me, Uncle Charlie, do you know right from wrong? And my answer is going to be yes. And I I am not going to take the chance because even even now, even with uh, getting vaccinated myself. I still don't take a chance. I had a person um, day before yesterday in Lihui uh, stopped off to pick to pick up some some food on the way back. Like I, I worked out in Kapa, and to see a person coughing, 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 coughing with a mask on, it tells me that that person definitely is sick. Because he did, I mean, I, I kind of watched him for nearly 10 minutes. Cough, take off the mask, cough some more, cough some more, put the mask back on. Something's going on. But, you know, I don't want to speculate, but I know it's something that I wouldn't want to be close to the person because I don't know what it is. And I feel bad for the person. Because I saw the person walking up with his mask on, but he was already coughing. So something is definitely wasn't going wrong. And I guess he wore the mask just to get into the stores he was going to go. But still yet, still yet, that's a problem on the horizon. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who are observant, yes. For the first time since we've been on the Mel and Charlie show, I have not won a Manu Heli. I've got the standard polo dry fit. I love these shirts. Even in the hot day, this thing is nice and cool. For you big guys out there, I would suggest you buy some. They go, they go up to 4X. It's comfortable. And then when, when you got a little perspiration, it wicks right off. I mean, and, it, and it's, it's cool. The, the material doesn't stick to you. So I want to give a shout out to Dry Fit for this uh, shirt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is a nice shirt, Charlie. It is a nice shirt, man. Thank yep. You. So one of the things um, today we had a nice, let me, let me see if I can actually share this thing. Hold on. <laughs> I think it's so funny. Uh, hold on here. I think you saw my um, my post today. How's this guy? Oh. Steve Monis. <clears throat> I don't know what I ever did to this guy. I don't know what I ever did to this guy, but apparently he thinks that, the, that they, whoever the they is, the state, or the federal government. I, I don't know who the hell he's talking about, but he says they put Mel Raposo, they put up Mel Raposo to distract us from the truth with state sponsored propaganda. Now, we know this guy, Charlie, we had him on our show twice during the campaign, give him an opportunity to share his platform when he was running for state house. Um, so I'm not sure what the heck triggered this. I, don't, I have not been nothing but professional to this guy. But I guess he woke up this morning and felt that. And then he says, I don't care if Mel arrests me for being a single father. <laughs> Charlie, when, when did they make being a single father illegal? You, I, don't, I, I work for the prosecutor's I, office. I, I would yeah. think I would know if it was illegal to be a single father. 
Um, I, I don't, this guy, I mean, Charlie, what is your thoughts on this guy? I, it's bizarre. Well, yeah. Well, all I can say is he's not well. And uh, when he ran for office, I guess proof is in the pudding. I mean, don't get mad at us because you didn't get elected. I mean, just by your your written outbursts, you, you've only alienated more people. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to achieve, but I, I'm just I'm just uh, baffled why he would come out and attack in such a way. I mean, like as if Mel and Charlie has the power to, you know, do what he says and. Come on, you know. So anyway, I, I just feel this 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 person is um, right now. We do have individuals that who courts low on a W uh, on um, a WD forty or thirty weight one out of two, and he and he's just well he put it this way. He's off his rockers. How's that? <laughs> That's why I I gotta tell you, man. I I chuckled. I chuckled because uh, I was thinking, what would trigger something like that? I, I don't know. What was it? I, I don't know. Again, it goes back to the, you know, the, the people that think we're fear mongering. And uh, he, he posted that on Felicia Cowden's page. Felicia had posted uh, a post. She had made a post, which was very nice. <clears throat> and, and basically said that, we must all band together to get through this pandemic. That was, that was a very, I thought it was a very cool post from Felicia, council member Felicia Cowden. And then this guy just flies off the handle and decides to go attack Mel Raposo. So I don't, I just thought it was funny. Um, I actually did chuckle. If, if it came from any one of you, uh, you know, I'd probably be hurt. You know, I, I would, I'd probably, I'd probably get my feelings hurt, but this guy, I just thought it was funny. At first I thought maybe it was somebody trying to be funny, but no, it's not. And uh, it's a guy that, like you said, he needs help. He needs help. So I hope he gets the help. I pray for him. Um, well, but you know, just, my, it was just my, bizarre. We, it we was talk, bizarre. We talked about it right now. I can only imagine that if he wants to take another run at office, he will have to get past this boo-boo <laughs> because if he does it, it's definitely going to stick with him like blue on blue. <laughs> I, you know, there's so, so, uh, I, 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 again, I, I don't know if, um, it says here, look at Melissa. Mel, do you have, there is a mongoose that keeps bothering my wild neighborhood chickens. Uncle Mel, do you have many handcuffs to arrest them? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I wish that opportunity arises where I can arrest him. I, I, don't, I don't see that happening, but uh, it's just funny. It's just funny. You know, it's, it's almost a flattering, Charlie, when, when they pick you out of everybody and, and throw stones. Uh, yeah. And, and I, <laughs> state sponsor, Charlie, how much did the state, the, the state pay us to, to pass off their propaganda? How much? I, I, I didn't get my check yet, but did you get your check? Well, I, I did receive, I did receive um, two hand roll sushis. That was, that was about it. Yeah. So I, I got one. Um, <laughs> I got one tax bill. That's what I got from the state. I didn't get no damn. It's just state sponsored propaganda. Wow. You know what, what is baffling is that we have brought so many experts on and yet <clears throat> everybody goes after Mel and Charlie. <laughs> they don't go after the experts. Yeah, they, they don't go after the experts we've had on the show. They go after Mel and Charlie, fear mongers, propaganda. And yet we, we have... We have, Charlie and I, have yet to come up with a hypothesis or a theory and, um, of, of COVID. I mean, we've relayed information that we've gotten from experts. Uh, <laughs> I hear it was his birthday and maybe he had one too many beers. That comment even made me go, hmm. 
<laughs> Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I tell you, it's it's. Uh... <laughs> and I just not going. Yeah, I just not going to engage with him. But um, but again, Charlie, I don't understand why people come after us and not not the experts that that uh, share their 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 um, findings. <laughs> no. I guess we're much easier targets. Maybe, I don't know. Well, maybe he thinks we're going to get rise out of us. The only rise you're going to get is. <laughs> he, he not being popular enough to run for office again. <laughs> well, I hope he runs. I hope he runs. Um, I really do. You know, I, I want to see, I, I want to see him run and maybe he can do better than getting 20% of the vote the next election. I don't know. That's a lot. I'm kind of surprised he got that much, honestly. Yeah. But. Well, you know, sometimes I think, you know, just for you viewers out there, the reason why we bring this up, I kind of wish, you know, he didn't do anything because, you know, when you do something that's so embarrassing, it's like a stain. It's like a tattoo that will never leave your skin. And he will go down in history in being a boo-boo trying to come after us. And, and you know, I, I would think it would be more credible if you had something to come after us about, right? Don't come after us thinking that because we don't know how many cotton candy. We never say we knew how to make cotton candy. That's an example. What he's coming after you for just makes no sense. You know, having the state do this. I mean, I guess he hasn't been watching the show that we've been pretty critical on the state and what some of the stuff the state has done. And so if he would have watched the show, he would have known that, hey, you know, we, we have no alignment with the state. We've just been sharing the information that we got and it hasn't been, you know, I wish I could find something favorable to defend the state, but it's been, it's been pretty critical of the state and how they handle certain things. So, you know, that's just saying that as in general. So I don't know, you know, maybe this guy got a script from, 1845 and said, hey, you guys, you guys, that's from the Southwest, melancholy. So he decided he would come on and blast us and it, oh darn, it's the wrong melancholy. You know, one of those things. So. Ed know. McDowell says election, will we have Governor Kawakami? That's an, that's an intriguing question. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I don't know, I, you know, he's, uh, they did ask him once on one of the news channels, this was last year. Uh, yeah. Well, I can't remember exactly when, but, you know, and he made it very clear that he was not interested, not, you know, that he was going <clears> to <throat> hopefully serve a second term here on Kauai as the mayor. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think that'll happen. I think he'll stay and, and uh, remain as our mayor for the next term. We'll see. We'll see that, that uh, you know, he's done an excellent job. I, I know some will argue that uh, he was anti-business, but I think overall he was uh, pro health and safety. That's what I think he did and kept Kauai in a very good position. As far as the virus is concerned, yeah, what is, was there consequences? Absolutely. There were, there were financial, economical consequences, but, uh, and I know there'll be a lot of Monday morning quarterbacks when this is all said and done, but um, he kept us in a very safe, safe position during COVID. And yes, and it, it came with a price. But if you look at the alternative, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, so you get no mm -hmm. complaints from me as far as how it was handled. Uh, would I love to see him as our governor? I can tell you, <laughs> uh, I definitely would like to see him as a governor before I see some of these other guys running. I'm not gonna mention yeah. names, but I think I would definitely want to see him as our governor. But again, you know, I think he want, he came home. He wants to stay at Kauai, and we'll we'll get him back on the show and pop the question, and ask him, put him on the spot, <laughs> like we did with with Donovan and um, Kochi. <laughs> yeah, Kochi came out yeah. real quick. He said, "I am not going to run for governor." Donovan left that one hanging, so we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Well, 
you know, one thing I can say is that the um, the mayor had, has done a lot of calculative moves to, to put us in a better position. And maybe they had that crystal ball because look at the, the rebound. I mean, I know there's some businesses still, still haven't fully re recovered. A lot of them, but it's just the amount of numbers of visitors that's coming here. I mean, a lot. You look at the over, um, you know, they do the aerial shots of Waikiki, downtown Waikiki in the middle of the day. It's wall to wall people. And they're saying that this time, you know, two years ago, you know, when we, we peaked in our tourist industry, I mean, they're, they're saying that the recovery has happened so fast, they can't believe it. Because the, the numbers, just the numbers, sheer numbers of arrival, like over a four, five day period, well over 125,000, just by the numbers that was on the news the other night. So, you know, I'm happy for those businesses that are, are, are reaping the benefits, okay? But yet there are still some things I'm saddened because, you know, having this past week, having to work these crazy hours uh, up in uh, Fomalohi, up in that area, Kapahi, you know, just the traffic, I, whew, I remember when we're just getting into it, the traffic wasn't that bad, not not as bad as it is now. And I'm pretty sure it's that way on all islands, right? Yeah. Pretty sure it's on all islands. So <clears throat> just got to hope and pray that there'll be a point where it kind of peak off. And, uh, you know, somebody asked me, why do you think we have so much tourists? Why? We've had the lowest numbers. If I was a visitor, I'd be glad to come to Hawaii knowing that the odds of me, you know, catching this virus is slim to none. That's why I'm going to come. But yet, you look at the big island, they had a cluster right in the prison. Not only prisoners, but staff members too. How it got there, I hope the contact tracing program can determine that. Right? Well, you know, the, the arrival numbers for Memorial Day weekend were as if we never it weren't, you know, it was pre pre COVID numbers. Um, and you know what is shocking, Charlie? I, and it is really shocking to me is how our hospitality industry experts or the so called experts said, well, we knew tourism was going to come back. We just didn't expect it to come back this fast. What did they think was going to happen? What, what did they think was going to happen when you opened it up? Did, why wouldn't it be like pre-COVID times? That to me, you know, uh, I think that is a convenient excuse because they didn't, they weren't prepared. They didn't want to be prepared. They didn't, they didn't choose to be prepared for this influx of visitors. Mm -hmm. So they just say, we, we didn't expect it. Well, they should have expected it because lay people like myself knew that it's not, it's not about being an expert, it's common sense, right? You had all these people salivating to come to Hawaii. They kept changing their uh, reservations. They keep changing their plans. And then Hawaii comes and said, all right, guys, take a test. No need quarantine, no need post arrival tests. That's like opening the, the, the corral door with a bunch of wild horses inside. What were they thinking? What did they think they were going to say, oh, no, let's, let's, no, no, they weren't, they're thinking when, when we can travel without a quarantine or without having to take a test, we're going. And that's what happened. And, uh, and it's not going to change, it's going to continue. Now, when you're talking about this vaccine exemption, you're going to see even more. We're going to have more visitors than we did pre-COVID. And, and we don't even have the, the infrastructure in place. Everybody's crying now. We cannot find workers. I went to Starbucks today. I try to order my, uh, my coffee on my app, which I always do. And it wouldn't say. It was just not available, not available, not available. So I parked my truck and I went into Starbucks and I told the lady, I said, hey, you're online your app is it working? She goes, we had to shut it off. We don't have enough staff and the number of tourists coming in to buy coffee, we cannot keep up. So we had to turn off the app. Hotels 
aren't prepared for the influx. Well, rent a cars, no more cars. But all of these industries, all of these visitor related industries are struggling because they weren't prepared. And that's where I blame the visitor industry for not thinking ahead and saying, hey, let's do it gradually. No, we let, open them up, open them up, boom. And now we can't even service our tourists, cannot service our visitors. No more cars, no more. They get bicycles, they're riding bicycles on the highway. Today I passed two more, Charlie, walking down Rice Street with their suitcases. I, I think they're lost. I think they're lost. Well, I saw today um, someone, you know, I, I don't blame them. It's uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, they are taking advantage of uh, what there is to be made. I saw um, local residents meet a couple of baggage claim. They came out across the street and they got into a car, one of their cars. And because it's a, one of those EV electric vehicles, right? The owner of the vehicle, and it looks like a, a BMW EV, pretty nice. And the owner said, was showing them about the, the hookups and, and, all of, and all of that stuff. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive to see how the deal went down outside of the regular rental car setup. This was done right in the parking lot, right? You know, from baggage claim, Hawaiian Air baggage claim, right past that, right on the crosswalk. As soon as you get the first level right there, two cars away, you know, that over there, they got limited parking, like maybe two or three cars in that short, right in there. The deal went down, the deal went down. So, you know, people are capitalizing on it. I'm, I'm pretty sure the individual, um, I'm not gonna say who it is because I don't know the person, nor am I gonna describe the race or, you know, the ethnicity, but all I can say is, I, from what I could hear was a pretty good sales speech to rent that vehicle. I don't know what, what it was, but I can just only imagine it was, 400 a day, probably 300 a day. Yeah. One, one of my, one of my guys speaking to one of my good friends today, he's a security director, Charlie, uh, you know, I'm not gonna mention names, but you know, <clears throat> he was telling me today, he lost one of his uh, security people, uh, quit, went out and bought three cars and making $30,000 a month uh, wow. with two rows. And it makes sense. You say, you're renting this thing out 300 to 400 dollars a day, and that's what's happening. I spoke to another friend of mine who works at uh, at the, one of the dealerships. They don't have cars. All of their cars are being sold for Turo, and these guys are paying off their cars relatively quickly. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens when when the uh, rental car companies meet up with the demand. Uh, and able to, I, I don't see that happening in the next few months, but still, uh, you're going to have a whole bunch of cars for sale, cheap, because they'll all have been paid for. They'll all have been paid right. for. So uh, uh, what you call that? Um, Uber and Lyft, these guys are all making a lot of money. And it's a good thing. What's happening, though, is these people uh, are not there because they're taking advantage or capitalizing of the opportunity, which is a very good thing. They're out of the job market, right? They're out of the job market. So you get, a, it, it's like a vicious circle, right? Like, uh, okay, no more workers because they're out making more money than they would if they were working. Uh, now with the unemployment restrictions or requirements, maybe that'll change. I doubt it. I don't think that's going to change at all. But all of these different things pulling people away from going to work. So now you go back to the situation that happened at, at the Starbucks. We're no more workers. We cannot keep up with the demand because there's too many people on the island and we don't have enough employees. Interesting. Interesting. You know the old saying, be careful what you ask for. Um, but it's nice to see businesses thriving and I, and I hope we can sustain it. I hope we can sustain it. Well, you know, if, if you think about it, if you just think about it, and you said it earlier, 
the question is this. Have we seen, uh, are we heading for a closure with this uh, pandemic? Or do you think we're still in the midst of something happening? Because, you know, st still there's parts of the world that it's, it's still raging right now. So I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I I'm think... just wondering. No, go ahead. No, no, no. Go, go. No, I, I think, Charlie, you know, watching what's happening, the, what's saving our country, I think, is the vaccinations. I think because of the number of vaccinations that we have in our country, you know, there's still mm -hmm. a lot of locations that, uh, that the percentage of vaccinated residents are very low. It's very low. You know, we're, we're at 51%, I guess. But like I said early on, we're still only half, half vaccinated. But if, if this period uh, of the next two weeks, if we don't see a spike in cases because of the Memorial Day travel and the, and the movement of everybody, then it may very well be that we have turned the corner and, and absent any outbreaks with new variants here in Hawaii, you know, I think people will get the virus. I think people will get sick. The ones that are not vaccinated will probably, you know, get hospitalized, maybe even die. But half of the community will, will be vaccinated. I, you know, the governor keeps talking, or the lieutenant governor keeps talking about 60%, 70% herd immunity. That's not accurate. We know that. Uh, we know that's not accurate. But it is better than 30%, like some locations that are still being hit pretty hard with the virus. So, mm -hmm. we, it, you know, we, we'll see what happens. I think the combination of vaccines, the, the treatments that have, you know, we've had a year and a half of this treating this vaccine, I mean, it's a virus. So I think between the vaccines, between treatment and between people still being safe, still being safe. Um, we, we can, we can live somewhat normal life. I agree. I agree. Oh, I agree. So we'll see, because it was buck loose This last Memorial Day weekend was buck loose uh, pretty much throughout the state, pretty much throughout the country. The problem is now you get that two week cycle, right? For the, the, the incubation period of the virus. Now what happened here in Hawaii happened in every other state. Right. How many of those people will be coming over and coming in contact with the unvaccinated percentage or the unvaccinated residents? So, uh, you know, a lot of moving parts. The key is to get vaccinated, get, get as many people vaccinated as possible to, to keep people out of the hospital and from dying. That, that's what it boils down to. So we shall well, see. I, all, I, all I can... All I can say is um, people just got to be safe. That's all. Okay, because, you know, certain things slip through the cracks and certain things happen. And uh, again, you know, we've had reports before of individuals who have gotten the virus. But I have to say, that, you know, they, they didn't get really sick because they're of their vaccination, but they still carried the virus. And, it's, and you know, it, what you need to do is look at them and those who have not been vaccinated that's where if they have the meeting, that, that critical junction, right? Once they cross, and if, if, the, um, if the meeting period is long enough, then I think you know, the, the transference of that, of that virus can happen. But for the most part, you know, people are safe. But yet what we saw this weekend, I can tell you, Waimea alone, I don't think I've ever, with the exception of the town celebration, I don't think I've ever seen that many people especially when it's hot during the day. Oh, and tons of people. And then, of course, you know, we got the, the, those bubble heads that, you know, go kick a uh, especially visitors. They think, oh, get on truck on the sand. Maybe I'll go drive on the sand, thinking that this is Daytona Beach, Florida, where you can drive on compacted sand. On Kauai, it's called quick sand. And there goes the cup. <laughs> Into yep. the quicksand, yeah. So yeah, there, there's there there's definitely a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, uh, and and that was always the concern, Charlie. It was always the concern about visitors coming in, uh, returning residents coming back from the mainland, possibly carrying the, and these variants. They get, you know, it, it just keep producing new variants. One of the things Dr. Uh, Jerome Kim will talk about next week is 
is the, the variance and what we can expect going forward. Remember now, this is the Inspector General of the International Vaccine Institute. I don't know if there's a more knowledgeable guy about vaccines uh, in, in, uh, available as a resource. So I, I'm, I'm curious to hear what he's gonna say. And if he, had, he was on Asian Boss, I don't know if you ever saw that YouTube, I posted it on my page. If you scroll down on my page, you'll find the YouTube video for uh, his interview with Asian Boss a few days ago. It's 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 fresh, and he talks about everything, and um, he's very 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 knowledgeable. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, remember when we first had him on, either the first or second time he was on our show, we spoke about the footprint. We spoke about the footprint of the virus. Remember the question, Charlie? I think you asked the question about whether or not this virus was created, or was it from an mm -hmm. animal or whatever. And he made it very clear that that the foot the footprint the genetic footprint of this virus, which was studied by numerous countries and experts, all point to it being uh, not a man-made virus. It just doesn't exist. And now we're starting to see more more rambling about, you know, put that to rest. The the I mean, what more you need? Yeah, you got the whole International Vaccine Institute that studied it, and we'll ask him that question. Um, when he comes on next week, but you know, it's it's let's go, let's go, let's move forward, and let's get everybody on the on the same page and stop this crap about. Now you start up a whole new. You talk about propaganda. Um, we, I, I, I can't imagine Dr. Kim coming back and saying, "Oh, after further review, the footprint has changed." No, man. Well, we have a bigger and stronger microscope. It, he he made it very clear that it was not possible with with the genetic footprint that that we have or that they found that it was not created by man. So we'll see. That'll be a good question to ask them. Well, the, the other thing too, I kind of would like to know would be um, about that one individual right now that contracted the bird flu virus, right? The one they've been talking about. And guess where it started again? Guess where? Take a wild guess where it started. Holy Holly. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good old China again. Well, you know, why does everything have to start in China? You know? What? I mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, I'm waiting to see that one, the, the bird flu. Can you imagine we get a bird flu pandemic? Uh, we've had one before, but it only affected birds. Now, can you imagine if if this thing will be transmittable uh, to humans? Oh my God! They they say that that it, it's probably aerosolized, and I can figure out the reason why. You know, I'm not a scientist, but you put two and two together. If you have a bird that's sick flying around and sneezing, that's why it's aerosolized, and the hanabata drop from the beak and land wherever you see. Walking below, you won't get nailed with that bird flu. Yeah. So maybe I think maybe we gotta combat this bird flu by giving birds um, uh, a mask. But then you gonna see a lot of birds flying around with a mask on. And I think why it's gonna be hard for them with a mask is because guess what? Birds no more ears. So how are they gonna hold a mask on their beak? No can't. Oh, or 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 we feed the birds um, whatever they give them for, for what do they call it? Uh, um, for make you get stuck doodle? Or oh, X-Lax. No, x lax make you go to other one. Um, emodium. Emodium, emodium. You make emodium food for the birds uh -huh. so that you know make doodle. In fact, we should do that anyway because they you know they when they drop that bomb on your car, you know that that thing <laughs> goes through the paint. That thing eats through the paint, Charlie. So, but well, that's why it's always cautious. Never park under a tree or on the telephone lines, right? Yeah. And do you do you know why that a lot of people when you call early in the morning, why you get a busy signal on your phone? 
because the birds are on your telephone lines. They say that if you get more than four birds on the line, it interrupts the signal. Oh my goodness. Okay, is... Mario. <laughs> uh -huh. Mario, Mario said, change the subject. <laughs> Change the subject. What do you guys like to talk about? What? Come on, let's go. Mario, what do you like to talk about? What do you want? The first one, we're going to talk about the next. This is what we're going to do. It's 7.30. We get half an hour more. The first topic you guys put up, we're going to talk about, regardless of what it is. If we don't want no more pandemic, we need to take care of our Mother Earth and stop destroying it. Bingo. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Look to science. Melissa. Awesome. <laughs> Yep. Bird's gonna die from impaction. Yeah, here we go. Come on, give us a topic. Give us a topic. Yeah, surfing. Oh, surfing. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Surfing. 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 Hmm. I. I gotta be honest, man. I I body surfed when I was. You know, I grew up boogie boarding. I, I tried surfing once. It didn't work out. Um, but I loved, I actually lived in the water all my growing up years. Kalapaki was our beach of choice. Uh, Granite Keys, whenever we could get a ride out there. But you know, back mm. in the day, Charlie, we lived up in Lihui, up by uh, where the Tip Top Road, one road down from Tip Top or up from Tip Top. And we would walk to, to Kalapaki with our boogie boards. And that's how we would get, we'd get down there for go. Um, beach and hang out at the beach all day mm -hmm. so oh, look at all the issues coming up now oh my god talk well, about yeah, our party time. our party is coming guys we're getting every day we get closer and closer and closer to charlie's concert that's coming up people that is coming up uh, when is charlie we... gonna play and well you know let me let me ask that and, and thank you for that that question I've been getting a lot of requests, you know, because as you know, we, we played a lot before the pandemic. And I don't know what it was, but I, I think, you know, a lot of it, I did get affected by my brother, but, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing much better. But, you know, it's only been a year since he's been gone. And uh, I've been, you know, really seeking out, you know, do I want to go back and play? And, you know, right now, for some reason, I thought I would never lose the love of it. But, man, I, I just, I just lost the interest. I, I don't know what it is. And I, I listen to my favorite music to try to get me motivated again. And I just can't turn that corner right now. Just, I don't know. Anything. So I apologize to those who, who love my music more than my jokes. When I used to make fun of a lot of people at the restaurant. <laughs> but uh, that was to kind of hold my temper down. That's why I would do that. But uh, I definitely will let you know when I'm ready to go back in the, into playing music. I'll, you folks are going to be the first to know. I think a lot of our lives were disrupted. I mean, everybody's life was disrupted in some way. And uh, and I think once we get back to normalcy or the new normal, which may be still wearing a mask, whatever it may be, um, I think a lot of people will, I think Charlie going back and play music. I think we'll see Charlie back uh, with his group. And I can see uh, for those of us that live on Kauai, I think we're, we're going to have a lot of fun uh, meeting up wherever Charlie's playing and having a few beverages and and uh, and singing along and talking story. I think that'll happen. I think it's it's going to happen sooner than later. But uh, yeah, I think a lot of people, a lot of people, just uh, lost interest in things that they enjoy doing. Um, what is your favorite COVID lockdown memory, Charlie? Do you even have one? Uh, you know. I, I think just I, being home, I think being home with being able to spend time with, with uh, my wife and my mother-in-law and, and cannot go out and not being uh, so quick to go run out and go spend money, um, just to be able to stay home and talk story, watch TV. I think that, 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 that's kind of my favorite look back when I look at the lockdown. Mm -hmm. I don't well, know you know, I, I I do. I do want to say that uh, my memory is just is just having that 
that time to you know be with your loved one, right? I mean, everyone. You, know, you think about it, and everything was at a slower pace. And I can just imagine, with the exception of the updated materials that we have in life now, I bet that's how oh, Hawaii used to be. Just taking it easy, you know, malka to makai, harvest whatever you can, feed the family, and no, no, no sweat, you know. But you know, everything with that hustle and bustle attitude, like everything, like come on, come on, come on, you know, we got limited time. You know, the sun will only stay up for so long. We gotta do this, we gotta do that. No oh, man, if you can stay and just enjoy, go for a ride, have a nice one. A nice one. That's that's my that's my feeling. Yeah, I think it. Uh, you know, I, I think it really woke a lot of people up. You know, and and for a lot of us, Charlie, you included, and many of our viewers, you know, our, our kids or grandkids are away, and we haven't seen them for so long. That that kind of uh, it's so weird because I mean, we'd go every Christmas, we'd spend Christmas together, but it seems like I talk to my kids more now. <laughs> because mm -hmm. we haven't seen each other for so long than we did before. I mean, a year is still a year of not right. seeing your kids. And uh, mm -hmm. it's been over a year now. It's going on two years. But we talk more now than we did before COVID. Mm -hmm. we, you know, so I, I love that. And it's uh, it's pretty cool. And And sometimes, like the stock market has a correction every so often, you know. I think life has a correction too, and and God is in charge. He says, you know what? We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get some corrections going on. People forgetting about life and love and ohana and all of these things. So let's 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 make a little correction and make them remember what Charlie. I think what you said is so right. Growing up was so different than it is today. It was, right. it was spending time with the family. It was spending every weekend with the extended family. It was always like that. And that doesn't happen anymore for the most part, so. And you know, another thing that was brought to light, you know, what this pandemic has done, it has made me even realize more than ever, more than ever, how precious your time is when you're with your loved one. And that means, you know, I find myself going to dinners and not even looking at my phone. You know, back, everything, Everything has always been, look at the phone, look at the phone, right? I mean, you're supposed to be having a nice dinner. You're not supposed to be over there checking your, your emails or checking Facebook. If you if you there uh, with dinner with your, your date, your wife, your spouse, hey, they're the most important thing. They're the most important person at that time. Put the damn phone down. I learned that because, you know, if, if you can't pay attention now, and I say this and I tell everybody, please, you care about somebody enough, you make it worth the time while they're here on earth. Because once they're gone, you can never recover them. And that's the thing that always, <laughs> that's the thing that always gets me a little sentimental is because, you know, my wife and I, we've had this talk before. And I said, you cannot live forever, but there's gonna be one day, you know, when, we, when we're connected at the hip, one day, one of us going, it's either me or her, and I can only pray that who's ever left behind that we can survive that, you know, that that loneliness. That's the thing that, and yeah. I dread that. <laughs> I don't want that day ever to come. Right. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, neither do I, Charlie. <laughs> neither do <laughs> I. Uh, question, yes. mask wearing outside, is it true we don't need to wear a mask? Yes, it's true. We don't we need to wear a mask outside unless you're in a group, a large gathering, whatever the hell a large gathering is. But yeah, um, if you're outside and you're not in a large gathering, you don't need to uh, wear a mask. Start planning that big what? party. <laughs> Who are we well, going to have as, uh, as guest musicians? Um, no, I will have a lot. Well, we'll have like a boss gags and, you know, Michael McDonald, those yeah. kind of guys. Cool. Yeah. I, I, we haven't booked, I can try, I'll give him a call tomorrow. I think he's in my address book. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Aaron, 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 Aaron. 
the question was, what is your favorite COVID lockdown memory? This RNRN &RN says, mine is actually watching you guys. That is so sweet. Actually, now come to think of it, Charlie, <laughs> my favorite COVID yes. lockdown memory is, is the show. Yep. In addition, yeah. You know, and it, it's all my wife, you know, my wife actually watches the stuff. She's out, out in the living room and uh, she, she watches the stuff and depending on what I say or what I do, uh, you know, I get created, uh, I get cre uh, critiqued, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you guys, you guys all are so special to us. And, and I know I speak for Charlie. We've made a lot of friends. I feel like we're just a big family. I really do. I feel like we are a huge, huge family, Ohana. And uh, it was kind of, ha it happened by accident, but at this concert that Charlie's going to put on, we will have an opportunity to meet each and every single one of you. And we'll take the concert to each island so we'll be able to, we'll be able to um, share with all, meet every single one of you. Every single one of you. Before, before we start that concert, I want everyone to join me in helping me with my GoFundMe uh, page so I can get the concert to every island. You know, you know, since I've been with Brother Mel, I just love when he volunteered me because I know there's always a, a financial crisis just over the horizon. Hey, the fun has just begun, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. The fun has just begun. Look, look at Mario. We had a hard time when you guys went to three days a week. Oh, my goodness. You guys going to make me cry now. Stop. Stop. We need to change the subject for sure. No, this party yeah. is going to be amazing. This party, and we just we're just going to visualize this real quick. It's it's going to be it's it's going to be more than one stage. It's, we cannot we cannot do it all on one stage. So there'll be multiple stages. It's going to be live. Yeah, it'll be live stream too, really, and it'll be live stream to those in other countries because everybody in America is going to come to this concert, man. It's going to everybody in the, in the state will be here. Um, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. I, I wanna, I wanna thank Melissa. She said that she saved all her money from her eyelashes, and she's gonna give it to us. <laughs> you know, and and I'm serious about this concert. It's gonna happen, whether or not it's gonna be multiple stages, and all. But we are definitely gonna do something. And um, yeah. what I would love to do is. You know, make it make it a charitable event, Charlie, and and uh, you know, for all of you know, I don't know how long how long more we have. Really, uh, I don't know how long more this damn thing is gonna go on. But you know, there's there's we we so many people have come on and shared with us, you know, about special people, organizations, you know, Melissa, you know, going out and giving PPEs. It's, it's recently she's still doing that. She's still going out and with, with her own money going out and handing out PPEs to people that need them. I mean, there's so many stories like that. Wouldn't it be great to raise some money and, and give back to the community in a way that um, that would be meaningful? And that, that's kind of what I'm looking at. That'd be so much fun. You know, for me, I, I am looking and, you know, again, it's when I do the concert, I do want to invite those who have been part of the show this entire time and come up and share their story. One is like Melissa and her, you know, she's the PPE angel. And then you got people like Kiala Wolf. You got Patty Kawakami. You know, we just got another arrival of masks. She's always making these masks. And that's, we're able to pass these masks out to our kupunas when we do the food drives. We give out the complimentary mask and, and we give her the credit. And you know, her for her to just continually do that, as well as um, Melissa and all, everyone, you know, I would love for them to get up on a stage and just share their little story of why. And I do want to say thank you to all of you who, uh, with the compliments of how we help during the COVID, make your time pleasurable that you had something to watch, see, and like Mel said, you, you all become family. And yes, uh, Morale, we will, we won't 
end it completely. We will at least have a show weekly, but then we'll move into a different phase of what we'll be talking about. I did, I did want to do a little, uh, as for your, your prayers, you know, that, that, that poor individual from the mainland that uh, supposedly went hiking and he is not found. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's a tough thing as a parent, you know, they were on the news the other night. You just, you just try to visualize because they're helpless, they're far away and they just want their son to be found. And yes, I know there's a lot of people, you know, um, somebody put out a post, you know, if you have a drone, if you have a group of individuals with drones and you guys want to give up your time to go up there and do some flyovers and try to, you know, coordinate and pick spots, maybe that way, but you know, don't do it if uh, KFD is up in the air with their, with their bird, don't do it. But if there's nobody up in the air and you want to do something like that to help find this missing hiker, by all means, go for it. I think it will be very, commendable on your part if, if you wanted to do that yeah um you know i that it's it's so sad i, I can only imagine how those the parents feel I, I would go nuts and i just hope it all works out you know uh Thank we had one of uh one of our good friends son's uh, son was lost up in coke for for quite a while and uh I, I'm not speaking for the family, but for me, I, you know, I, you know, just I'm a realist and I, I just knew in my heart that it wasn't going to end up good, but it did. And he lit, he was, he was, he was lost, but then he was found and he's, he's fine today. Uh, Cody Kimura, the guy with the, the boat tour, the boat. he was on our show. Yeah. He was lost up there and, and, uh, and uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was just a, you know, I don't know how a parent would feel. So prayers go out and I hope, I hope they get some closure. I hope he's fine. I hope he's okay. Uh, that's, if you're not familiar with that area, it's not a safe place. So um, I'm hoping that, uh, that he's fine. And I hope that he, they, they find him fine, uh, dehydrated, but uh, plenty of water up in Koke, uh, plenty, plenty of fruits, you know, so we'll just see. Hey, the other the other thing um, I wanna I don't wanna I know it, once we start naming names we're gonna, you know we'll leave people out and please please I apologize but uh, you know when we first started Charlie we had the T-shirt campaign Kirk Correa Kirk Correa yes. started doing shirts and uh, yes. what was so funny was just in fact this is one of his shirts right here but but we had the Doodle Boy shirt we had the just our regular Mel and Charlie shirt. We had all the different shirts, raise a bunch of money for Hawaii Community Foundation. Uh, so Kirk Korea, mahalo buddy. I know he still pops in on our show. So uh, Kirk was the other one. Yes. That, um, in fact, we're gonna have a concert shirt. Uh, it's gonna be a, that might be the way we're gonna do it. Everybody buy a shirt and that'll be, uh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, you know, as we, these are one of the nights that, you know, we, I think, I think tonight we're in this reminiscing mode, which we're, we, we talked about the things we had to get away, get through early. But I find myself looking at the clock, seeing what time, and just reminiscing that, you know, before we, it's just like we didn't have enough time. There was so much to be said about how to fight COVID, right? But now it's like, what else can we do? We have beaten, you know, truthfully, we have beaten COVID into the ground so many times, but all it takes is just one time and one mistake can cause it to resurface and breathe new life, right? And I think that's, that's the hard part. We've said it over and over again, that this thing is dangerous. It is so dangerous. And you, if you give it the opportunity to live and breathe, we don't get to jam up again. You know, that, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to put fear into anyone. I'm just saying, you might not get affected, but somebody will. And if that thing resurfaces, like the boogeyman, oh boy, I don't know how we're gonna get him back into his coffin. I just don't. It's gonna be one of those very, very rough times. 
Garden. Yeah. How is my garden, Mario? My gar oh, Ed. Um, yeah, we're gonna keep it going, Ed. We, we, I think Charlie mentioned earlier, we're gonna transition off at some point. Um, at some point, we'll transition off, and then we'll, 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 it will probably be a weekly show. We'll see. Um, I mean, we still got COVID to deal with. We still, it's not over, and I think people, you know, and I think that's what frustrates me a lot about when you, uh, when you listen to the lieutenant governor because he. He, and I think he means well, he just wants this thing to be over and he wants everybody to go back to normal, but we still, this virus is not over and we just gotta be patient and we gotta do it right. So, but yes, at some point we'll transition off. There'll be nothing to talk about with COVID, but we'll be able to showcase a lot of people that, uh, that was affected, that the heroes of COVID and whatever. I mean, it'll just be a fun thing that, that we'll do. And uh, that, that time isn't here yet, but Hopefully, very, very, very soon. Hopefully, very, very, very soon. Um, one of our maybe. original guests, one of our early guests, and I would be remiss, I just saw it now. One of our earliest guests that we brought on sounded the alarm about the, the, the breakouts in the prison. And she stood strong and she fought tirelessly against the administration that just wouldn't take precautionary measures. And she prevailed. And that's our our sweetheart, uh, Lana Hughes. So we don't want to forget about her. But she really did a fantastic job. It wasn't yeah. easy, especially, especially, you know, because she, she did face some rough roads, not health-wise, but the stigma attached to having COVID. Remember, she talked about a situation um, that her ex had maybe kind of used the COVID as a reason why she shouldn't have her son. But he, he soon found out that didn't work. She got her son back. And, and he's been with her all this time. So I, I'm happy for her. But she also, too, was instrumental in helping the prisons understand that when you got all these new prisoners come in, you just kind of throw them into a general population. You gotta, you gotta separate them, let them go through their period of time until they're, they're absolutely, they're not carrying anything into the prison, you know? And I think what she had mentioned and what she had gone through, I think, I think played a big part, played a big part. Yeah, interesting how, when, uh, because she spoke out against the institution, right? She came out and did something that was very difficult to do. Uh, I, I, mm -hmm. I know for a fact that, you know, probably 75, 80% of the people would not do what she was willing to do, maybe even more. Um, to, to put yourself out there in this very political state when, you, when you're gonna go out and share with what's going on what's going on, what's wrong in our, in our institution, you put yourself out there for uh, all kinds of problems. And, and she, she decided to come forward. Vahine Ikaika, you know, funny when a politician do something good, all kinds of shit, they put statues, parades, all this kind of stuff. And yet when on citizen like Lana and many others, but Lana, because I think Charlie, you, you bring up a good point. She was the one really that I think brought the volume of viewers to our show. When, when we put that thing out that Lana was gonna be on um, and her story was unbelievable. Yeah, I, I think, you know, she deserves a, a mega award, but do you think the government will ever reward someone for speaking out against the government? I don't think so. And, uh, but, like I said, one day when we're on that stage, Charlie, we'll, we'll recognize all of the people. She's a true hero. Again, many heroes. Uh, and now I'm seeing some of the names roll up. Dr. Capono, Chong Hansen, Dara O'Carroll, Jonathan Dworkin. Yeah. All of these people that stood up and spoke the truth. Sarah. Um, Sarah. Sarah. Your friend. Yeah, your friend that woke up and next you know he was in the hospital. Remember, I forget his name. George Ma, Russell Izumo. Yeah. All of these people that 
were brave enough to come on the show. And there were just so many more, Charlie. Honestly, I, I'll have to Niall go back and look at all the shows. Don't forget Niall now from Lanai. Oh, HPD. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you guys for remembering. Yeah, please, uh, no offense if we cannot remember. We all, we too old fat. And yeah. sometimes we forget. But you think yeah. about it, Charlie. We've had so many people come on this show over the last, whatever, 15 months, whatever it is. I mean, you think about it. A lot of people. Uh, we were doing this seven nights a week. We had seven new people every night. It was crazy. I, I got to go back and count. We probably had, I mean, we had to have had over 100 guests, I would guess, maybe 200 guests. And we had people from all over the world. We had Minnie Cole. We had Dr. Kim. I mean, a doctor, uh, yeah, Jerome Kim. Uh, Lee Anslin, Jonathan Dworkin, Daryl Carroll, Lee Altenberg. Lee yeah, Altenberg. We all of We've had Darryl. a lot. Doctor, uh, doctors of Waikiki. Dr. T. Yep. Uh, yes. Miskovich. These guys on CNN was on our show. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying that this show has provided us an opportunity, Charlie and I, an opportunity, not just to meet our, our new Ohana, but to meet so many people that care about people. Angela and willing Keen. to step forward. Angela Keen. Angela Keen. Josh Green. Josh Green was on our show. Remember when he was, before he lost his mind? <laughs> <laughs> Did I just say that? Yes. <laughs> Hey, uh, we 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 had we were able to meet up with Charlie and I were able to meet up with General Hara last week, and I told yep. General Hara, when you see the Lieutenant Governor, and I am sincere about this, I said tell General uh, tell the LG that nothing is personal, nothing is personal. We disagree, uh, so. It's not personal, man. It's not personal. Yeah, don't forget Dr. Akhtar, the angry doctor. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, I mean it's, it, it was never personal. Um, but we got to credit him. He was on our show. Remember, like I said, before he, before he changed his position, he was... Oh, there we go. Yeah, before, we, before he changed his pos, uh, position, he was one of our main sources of information and, and uh, the importance of testing and, and, uh, and, and being safe. And then that just, you know, that changed over the time. But nonetheless, like I said, nothing personal. There's General Hara. Um, Major Cullen, Lieutenant, there, in fact, there's two generals in that picture. Well, soon to be, um, starting from left to right, there's uh, Major Chris Cullen. Uh, that's Colonel right there. Our next name is Stephen. Yes. Uh, was it Jones? And then you got Dana, uh, he, former MPD. He's a Sergeant Major. And then, of course, Adjutant General Ken Hara. And then right below that, right there, is. Um, yeah. Kyoki Bumalag with the face mask on. That's him. Yeah. And of that's, course, that's, that is at the world famous Wong's restaurant in Hanapepe Town. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Melissa, Melissa just posted, oops, but the foundation, mahalo to the aunties, Stephanie Ayona and Patsy Raposa for giving up your time with your husbands to do the show. You are the foundation of this all and we thank you. Absolutely, Melissa. The unsung heroes, yeah. Stephanie and Patsy, the unsung heroes, no doubt about it, man. We could not do this without them, plain and simple. Yep, yep. Well, brother, it's above that time. I, I do want to close out uh, by saying again, thank you so much to all of you joining us tonight, allowing us to go down to memory lane. Now, I know we missed some people uh, 
you know, we had local five on with us, Mr. Gill and everything. Uh, we may not agree with uh, Mufi, but you know, Mufi was on and, and thank him. Uh, Big John DeFries from HTA, uh, Sue Kanoho. Uh, what is our lifeguard friend? He's, um, well, you know him, I forget his name already, from Kauai. Who? A lifeguard. Oh, a life um, yeah, he's my good friend. See what happened when you get old. You know, I, I see my I see my wife bought one new bottle of Prevagen. I'm gonna try that because man, I'm getting forgetful. I'm getting forgetful. But you know, I just want to say thank you to everybody. You you make you know when I do this, you, you sure make me feel special. And I, I can't thank you enough. And I hope we reciprocate the same to you as well. That that you feel special knowing that you oh Kalani Vieira. Yes, thank you. Thank you, yeah, Kalani Vieira. There you go. I feel Tara like I'm uh, Dr. Barraman, uh, Mayor Kawakami, Mike Dahili. But you know, you make me feel so special and I hope we do the same for you. And I hope you know that anytime you can just get a messenger, get a message to us, because you know, I've, I've had so much experiences now with those that just write and just like talk story on messenger because times are uncertain. And I hope I was able to uh, take you out from that dark tunnel bring you back into the light because as long as we take our safety measures we're going to get through this and, and we're, we're we're getting there we're getting there's no doubt about it so just don't give up the fight okay i know it may seem things are so relaxed more than ever that's when you got to be vigilant but don't give up the fight okay so i want to thank you all very very much now all right. Well, I just I just going over, you know, like I said, thank you guys for refreshing our recollection. Um, sorry, my mic keeps moving. Joanne Yukimura, Steve O'Neill. Uh, yes. Congressman Kahele. We had, you know, we had we had uh, Tulsi Gabbard. We had all the the COVID Senate committee uh, made several appearances. So there, there's just so many people. Oh, Sarah Blaine, of course, the chief of staff um, that has been our go-to person. She has been our go-to and continues to be our go-to person uh, even today as we as we start to wind down. And and I just again, I know I mentioned you mentioned Angela Keene, but I want to say this: you know, Angela Keene um, early on got COVID, and never did she stop her her quest for doing the right thing. And even as mask mandates and, oh, I'm sorry, Lauren Pang and Amy Ho. Thanks, Dana. Uh, Thanks. She continues many times by herself to push the safety of, uh, push for the safety for our people. So Angela, I'm not sure if you're on or not, or if you're listening, but thank you. Another true hero for our state. Oh, there she is on. And um, yep. I hope one day we'll be able to uh, put this behind us and have some, some really good fun. And, and, and uh, uh, still a lot of work to do, Angela. We appreciate what you do. Just know that we appreciate what you and Quarantine Breakers and everybody else has done. So with that, Charlie, it was pretty cool yep. going down memory lane, although the memory not that good. Uh, <laughs> maybe we should have prepared better, but hey, this is impromptu. That's what I, I tell you. If I learn the next show, the next, the next one, one hour before the show, I will take my prevagen, so I, I get all my faculties in order. <laughs> and so I know we'll do good. We'll do good. Okay. You get some prevagen. I forget what I was saying. <laughs> Hey guys, we'll be back on Friday night, seven o'clock. <laughs> I don't know what, we'll find somebody. By the way, Rhonda Morris had texted me while during the show. She said, today marks one year, exactly one year from when she was on our show. That's right, we had Rhonda, we had Tyson Moises. Maybe yeah. we'll bring on Rhonda, just for the hell of it. Charlie, we bring Rhonda yeah. on and then you and me leave. Yep. Yeah. And then she can she can 
she can talk about the whatever she can yeah anyway people so. we love you guys so much thank you guys for joining us we'll see you guys friday night seven o'clock for feel good friday say a prayer for everybody man let's go we need god now let's go get it done hello you guys take Whoa. care